Hey there, Pretty Plant Girl here. I'm in the greenhouse this afternoon, uh, taking advantage of a sunny but windy kind of nasty day to get a few jobs done in here that I've been putting off all summer. So I still have my sweet potato vine that I planted in here going and I have some potatoes I still need to dig out. And I actually have some cauliflower and carrots that I've sowed a few months ago that are starting to get larger. And um, hopefully I'll be harvesting those late in this, later in the season when the rest of my garden has been put to bed. What I'm going to be working on today though isn't harvesting sweet potatoes or even regular potatoes. I have these gorgeous lights up here. Um, they're lights that Kunta sent out to me a few last year I think. I think it was last year and I've had them hung in here. We absolutely love them in here but I uh, want to get I have a little bit of insulation up here this is just metal roofing and I have just a little bit of insulation and I want to get that uh, put in here properly and then I have some wood that I think is enough uh, to cover up the the roof in here just to make it look a little bit nicer but I need to take down the uh, hooks that I have the lights in lights hooked on there just in order to get the wood put up so I'm just going to take things down I've been slowly cleaning up in here I've been getting my trays cleaned and put in the house that I'm going to want when I'm seed starting in late winter, early spring, because I live in Saskatchewan, Canada. So I'll be, I'll be starting my seeds indoors and planting the bulk of my things out once they've already been started inside later next year. So I have to plan for that. So part of my planning for the fall and prep, because snow is coming here, like I said, Saskatchewan, Canada. I am uh, in the end of September now, so I need to really get uh, kicked into high gear and get things uh, cleaned up for fall. It's always a hard thing to do here because we get such a beautiful warm fall most years, even though our nights can be quite cool. I haven't even had frost yet and it's the 26th of September. I think it's coming this week though. Usually we would have had it by now. But anyways, uh, so even though a lot of my plants are already are still looking great and growing and producing, I need to start cleaning things out or all of a sudden we're going to have a big dump of snow and I'm going to have a huge mess underneath that snow. So what I do to get ready for fall is I usually go around um, for any of my flower pots that aren't on drip. That's usually the first ones that I eliminate from my to-do list. So I dig those up. Uh, I either compost or trash the the plant matter that's in them. It just kind of depends on how buggy they are and how much room is in my composter. And then I just actually take the soil from all of my flower pots and I dump it into my garden beds. Usually they've been depleted a little bit over the summer and there's room in them to add some soil and it'll break down. The roots that are in there will break down over the winter and it just turns into a really nice soil to use for the next year. I also go through my garden and I take out any of the plants that are done producing have reached their end you know so when I'm harvesting my potatoes usually I'd be harvesting my beets though the vol voles apparently did that for me this year I still have carrots and parsnips in the ground hopefully the voles haven't eaten those because I like to leave the bulk of those to get a little bit of frost on them and a little bit of cooler weather uh, before I harvest them so I'll still be doing those and I still have a few pots of potatoes that I need to harvest. So those are things that I need to be harvesting still. Uh, I've gone through and I have started to take out things like my summer squash. I've been harvesting off of my winter squash and a lot of those plants have already come out. I have started cutting back and taking out my tomatoes, harvesting as many tomatoes as I can off of them. And then plants that are done producing or I've harvested all the usable tomatoes off of, they've been pulled out already. My peppers, normally I'd be doing the same thing with, but they are just going for it this year, so I'm trying to let them. I have taken my matchbox peppers, those are my really hot little chili peppers that I've been growing this year. They were all ripe and red on the plant, and I've cut the plant off, and I have it hanging in my shed, just out of direct light, hanging upside down, letting them dry, and those I will be taking off the plant later once they've dried out most of the way or all of the way, whatever it winds up to be before it gets too freezing cold out. And I'll harvest those off and I'll be saving a few just to add into dishes, just whole, just to impart that flavor. I like to put them into jars of pickles and things. The rest I'll be grinding up 
and putting into jars for like chili flakes. And that's what I use them for or grind them really fine and they can be a bit of a chili powder that way. Otherwise, I've been looking around at things like you may recall, I have a late sowing of, well, a couple of late sowings of bush beans and those I have brought out the, the frost fabric for and I'm just watching the weather every day and covering them up when they need to be covered at night. Anytime we're forecast to get below 10 degrees Celsius, I cover them. Not because they can't handle eight, 10 degrees Celsius, but because sometimes our forecasts aren't accurate here and we could get a light frost and beans do not want that. So I'm trying to keep them going. They are flowering, they're starting to produce beans and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be harvesting beans off of them except for the ones that I'm not sure if it's slugs or voles, something has eaten all the leaves, flowers and beans off of several of my burgundy bush beans for me. Mm. Love it. Love to share with the vermin. Uh, but I do have some golden wax beans and I think I have a few, couple bushes of, of sets of blue lake beans going. So hopefully I'll get something and the few burgundy beans that are left. But like I said, I just slowly start going through things like my cauliflower and that just, I don't know, they've just finished. Even though they're still producing heads, they're not nice heads out there. So I'm gonna be taking all of those out right away here in the next few days. I do have a few greens that I planted really late under cover. Those will remain. Most of those can take even a light frost. So I'll just leave those out as long as I can. My cucumbers, I pulled half my cucumbers out. The other half is doing better than they've done all all year and I'm getting you know a nice little handful of cucumbers every week so I've been kind of dragging my feet at pulling those out but they're going to come out here right away uh, and what else have I done I've got my garlic planted so that's always nice to get that done you can wait a little bit longer um, but I was hoping that putting it in that bed that seems to have voles in it might help discourage the voles from living there I don't know a lot of allium plants, which garlic is a part of, mice and things don't like, so it was worth a try. Uh, as far as my like ornamentals, like my flowers go, I tend to cut back like any annuals that I have growing in the ground, especially any that are really big and are just gonna turn into kind of a soupy mess as soon as the frost hits. A lot of my perennials I leave standing or I just cut back by half because those stems can be good for for uh, a lot of the insects to overwinter in, especially those hollow stems. Some, some insects really need those hollow stems to, uh, to overwinter in. So I like to leave some of that standing for them. And a lot of them have seed heads that the birds enjoy over the winter as well. Now, because I have voles in my yard this year, I will be cutting a lot more back just simply because I have found in the past that when I leave a lot of seed heads standing or a lot of ground cover standing, that just encourage them, encourages them to get comfortable because voles are still active in the winter and in fact can do some of their worst damage in the winter. They like when we have years of heavy snow, believe it or not, and they will just be tunneling around underneath that snow all winter. They'll be eating around the base of your fruit trees, girdling it, uh, which is cutting into the the layer right under the bark, which all the uh, nutrients and water in that go through, and they can kill off trees over the winter. They'll eat flowers, they'll spread seeds all over, and they just make a huge mess. So I will probably be cutting back a lot more this year than I normally do, just for that reason of the voles. But I have put out traps, and I have to say, these are a new trap that I'm trying this year. I they're not actually a new trap, but they're new for me to try. And I'm really liking using them. Uh, I'll, the, uh, you don't have to touch the actual rodent or anything on it. You don't have to get your fingers in where, where the uh, trap goes off. So you can't accidentally set it off on yourself. You don't have to touch all the messy bits when you're resetting it. It's just kind of a squeezing mechanism at the back. And it just has a very small little tray that you can put some some bait into, so I've used some peanut butter, seems to be working the best for me, but I also put some bird seed in a little bit of it just to try, see that. And um, it's a small little tray with a square around the outside. So in order to get to the bait, the 
rodent actually pretty much has to step on that little square and that's what sets off the trap in order to get to the bait. It'd be really hard for them, I think, to get to the bait uh, without setting the trap off. Whereas a lot of those traditional snap traps, they can just steal your bait off of it a lot of times and not even get trapped. Uh, when I'm setting a trap, I'm setting it if you can see the runs for a vole, so you can see where they're moving in the ground. A lot of times they're making a kind of a, a trail in grass or in the dirt where they go. They go so often that they leave kind of a little indent. And so I'm going to take the trap and put the, the business end of it crosswise against their trail. And uh, that seems to work the best instead of going up this way. I don't know why, but it's like if you go this way, they think there's a dark space at the end of the trail, I guess. And so they, they don't always go that way. But if you go this way, they still see the light through it. That's what I understand. And I also have tried to find entrances into the ground that they have. And I've put them right against. So if there's like a little hole like this in the ground, I'm putting the trap up against it like this. And then that seems to be working. Those are the ones I've caught the most out of. So hopefully I can get rid of all the voles before winter actually hits, but I want to make sure that I don't have a lot of excess plant matter for when they come. When I'm cutting my grass in the fall, I cut it very, very short. So for these next few cuts until the snow falls, it'll be getting cut very, very short. Again, that's something I've read that helps to de deter voles and cause less damage with they're in there and I have been doing that for years now and it seems to work well so that's something that I do I've also put down a fall fertilizer on my grass speaking of fertilizer is uh, any perennials that you have I have stopped fertilizing my in my perennials in like August so August is their last fertilizer they don't get a lot and then they are left to their own devices I find that cutoff uh, is good for them so they're not pushing out new growth that's going to be damaged. I probably could go a little bit longer but they don't really need it. Most of my, my perennials are in ground anyway so they have nutrient, nutrients in the ground. I also want to make sure that my shrubs and newly planted trees are really well watered going into the winter because you can easily uh, kill a plant with dry cold roots. So you don't want them soggy and sopping wet. You don't want them sitting in basically a puddle that's going to freeze, but you want to make sure they're well watered going into winter. So this month, I really want to make sure that I am on top of watering all of those plants, as well as any of the newly planted uh, perennials that I've put in. I want to make sure they're well watered as, as well. And that just helps things to survive the winter. You don't want plants going into winter dry. I'm also planting my bulbs. So I've got my bulb order i've picked up a few bulbs at the store and i'll be planting bulbs soon so that's the spring flowering bulbs as far as my summer flowering bulbs go i'm going to be lifting them if you don't know how to lift your dahlias your begonias your cannas uh, your acidanthera your um, gladiolus i can uh, direct you to some videos so either look for a little tab up here or check the video description I'll put some links I have some great videos that have helped a lot of people out so that's something that you can use to learn how to lift those things you want to be doing that fairly soon now if you live in a climate like mine where you should be having frost at any time or you've already had some light frosts this is also the time of year I like to go around and uh, collect seeds from some of my plants but I've gone through and collected some seed head seeds out of some of my calendula here. There you can see some missing. I've taken some of the dried seed heads off of my marigolds, collected those. Uh, I try to find some of my petunias that have formed seed and take some of the seed off of those. They're very, very fine seeds, so it can be difficult to work with. But, and you never know, you won't necessarily get that same variety again. But it can be good if you need to do just a mass planting of petunias somewhere and you can have just a lot of petunia seeds very inexpensively. Another thing that's really easy to save seeds from is impatience. So I will be going through and collecting up my impatience seeds, things like nigella, really easy to collect seed from. I think I've tried to collect a little bit from my uh, scaviosa this year. Uh, what else? I forget what all I've collected seed from, but just look around your yard, try collecting some of the seed. If it's something that's very important to you to have that seed for the next year and have those plants growing, maybe you want to also uh, pick up a package if you don't have any left 
from the year before, but you know, try it, try it and see if it'll grow from seed for you and how well it does. And then you can decide for the next year if that seed that's worth collecting. So I don't usually collect from my vegetables because I don't want them cross pollinated and getting, I want to know what varieties of each vegetable I'm growing. But for a lot of my flowers, I don't care. It's not as important to me. So I'll just collect the seed and use that for the next year. I also like to take cuttings. So these are the pots that were by my front door and I've moved them because I put a, an autumn display out there. But I have them sitting here because I've been taking cuttings of my coleus that are in these pots as well as this beautiful fuchsia. Let's see if, oh, just broke it off. It's just a very pretty flower. And I've been trying to see if I can get some cuttings off of both of these varieties. If you're taking cuttings, know that they might be, um, trademarked or what's the word I forget but you might not be supposed to be taking cuttings off of them and using them for the next year uh, if you are taking cuttings uh, make sure that you're not selling them for profit for sure if it's a, a trademarked variety because the breeders have put a lot of time and effort into creating these varieties and you certainly don't want to be selling them and violating kind of trademark copyright laws uh, another reason these are sitting here is I still have my uh, one begonia. It's in back here. You can't see it very well, but my uh, belagonia cream. I'm going to save the tuber from this. I have great videos on that. So um, I'm going to be saving the tuber from that to grow again. I I'm pretty sure that's a tuber, it's begonia, uh, as well as some of my other begonias. So these are just sitting waiting for me to, to get around to dealing with them. Things like this tradescancia started out as a house plant and I put it out here and I could take these back in and have them as a house plant again this year but like I said I've had so many thrips and things I think they're just going to be gone this year I have one plant that I held back so I'll just be happy with that so I think that the ones that are out here the trescancia that are out here will just go to the trash but yeah it's take cuttings save seeds and see what you can get out of it they don't always work out and you might need to take more but i do have videos on those and you can give it a try and see how it works for you and if you like overwintering those types of things as cuttings over the winter if it's worth it to you or if you'd rather just buy new plants the next year depending on where you live some plants can even be taken from being in a pot and overwintered right outside in the ground so you need to check the hardiness here where i am in saskatchewan canada uh, my area is a uh, zone three or ish for cold harding for cold weather so having most plants over winter in containers isn't a viable option uh, your plant should have a hardiness rating two zones colder than what your zone gets to if you're going to overwinter it in a pot and it should usually you want to have a fairly substantial sized pot so there's lots of soil uh, to insulate the roots of the plant if you're going to be doing that but you can take a plant that is hardy for your area and just bury the whole pot down in the ground if you have room for that or lift it out of the pot bury it and then replant it the next year uh, if it's a little bit borderline hardy you can try putting like a chicken wire kind of form around the plant and filling that with leaves again planted in the ground filling that with fall leaves once things have frozen you don't want to do it now when it's still warm out but once the ground is frozen, that's something that you can do to help protect plants a little bit. But again, if you have issues with mice or voles or other rodents, uh, they can find that as a nice cozy warm place to shelter over winter as well. So you do risk that when you, when you make a little space like that for your plants, but it can help. Otherwise, in the fall, I'm just collecting up leaves as they fall. They're just starting to fall off the trees now, but I'll be collecting up lots of leaves i like to collect the leaves up and i store them uh, over the winter and i use them in my compost i also like to empty out my compost bin right at the end of fall right before i am kind of expecting snow and then i can continue to fill it with uh, kitchen scraps over the winter and i'll just use those fall leaves that i've collected to put my layers in and it won't really be doing a whole lot over the winter. I mean, keep in mind, we get to like minus 35 here in the winter Celsius. 
so that's pretty cold. So it's not going to be doing a whole lot of composting over the winter, but it's storing it up and then it'll be nice and full and ready to get a batch of compost going right away in the spring. And so that's how I deal with that. And I usually just take my compost that's in the bin and I'll again spread it out on my beds, my garden beds, or I will just reuse some soil bags or something from the year before. I like to save them, fill those up and I'll just put them to the side. So that's just some options that you have there if you uh, want to do some composting over winter. The rest of the things I'm doing is just looking around and just deciding what worked this year, what didn't work and making plans for next year. I'm planning next year's garden. I've already drawn it out, gotten it ready. And uh, yeah, this year now that I have the greenhouse, I'm gonna have to clean out the greenhouse. There's cobwebs, there's leaves, there's dirt, there's mess everywhere. And I need to get that cleaned up. So that's one more job to put on my list. Oh, one more thing I'm doing this year that I didn't, I've never done before is I planted my lit pot up. So I just did that this morning and I planted some greens in there and I'm really excited to have that going again for the winter and enjoying some fresh greens right in the house when it's going to be too cold to have things outside. So the ones, the greens, the lettuce and spinach and things that I have planted out here in my garden, once they're ready and harvest, I'm harvesting them and they're pretty much done, that's when I should have a new batch ready to go inside. I've also already taken my lemon tree in. It's the only plant I have out here that I think I'm gonna be taking in to grow indoors this year. I've had a lot of thrips this year outside and I just don't wanna be bringing too much in, but I have treated it with some nematodes. Again, I can put a link below for those if you're curious what I use. And I've restocked on my sticky traps. That's something here where it gets cold. If you use nematodes, you can't order them when it's, um, freezing temperatures outside. So I like to stock up on a little bit of it for my indoor plants and that before winter hits, just to make sure that if I have fungus gnats, thrips, anything like that that's being brought in that can help me to deal with them inside. Uh, and before they get out of control, I make sure the sticky tra traps, of course, you can order all winter long, but the nematodes can't be frozen. So it's best to order them while well, the weather is cooler here, but not getting uh, solidly frozen. So I'll be ordering new batches of nematodes right away here. Uh, and they're usually good for several months. So that can help me to get through most of the winter before I need more and helps me to, to do that when they're hard to find in the stores here. So I order them from Amazon and I can't order them when it's freezing out. They won't ship them. They won't survive. Have you ordered your seeds yet? I have started ordering my seeds and getting them organized in my seed bin so that they're ready for next year when I start to plant up my seeds and I'll have them all ready to go and I won't be missing out on any seeds that uh, aren't available anymore, hopefully. So that's all part of that planning for next year and getting things ready. Lots to do. Uh, I'll share some of it with you as I'm doing it and hopefully you're getting ready for the winter as well, whether that means for you in your area getting ready for some fall planting because you don't freeze hard and you can actually enjoy this cooler weather to do some growing as a reprieve from the hot, hot summer when it was really too hot to be out doing too much. Or if you're like me and you're going to be in a frozen wonderland pretty soon and you need to get everything cleaned out and cleaned up and ready for that. So let me know in the comments down below what you do to get ready for fall in your area. I like to know where you're living too. It's good, it's helpful to know that. Uh, so we can see how different climates prepare for different things. You don't have to give your actual city or anything away, but just a general, general area or climate idea is helpful. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.